What you've just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. A common theme in a lot of my YouTube videos is my outrage at evil people taking advantage of human ignorance. This video is a book review and a video reply to one such example. A few weeks ago, I got a advanced reader copy of the book, quote, How to End the Autism Epidemic, end of quote, apparently written by somebody named J.B. Handley. I have no idea who this person is, so I did a Google search and I came up with this video. When I first saw this video, the comment section was not disabled. I read several comments written by autistic people wishing this person and his video and his book into hell. This Hadley person is pretending to advocate in defense of and in support of autistic people. Yet autistic people are wishing him into hell. One autistic person even said in the comment section, that hell was too good for this person. Therefore, this person, Hadley, hid the comments and then denied comments for his videos, all of his videos. How to end the autism epidemic. In this evil person's book, he claims that he is citing the Centers for Disease Control and also the World Health Organization. Both organizations have stated again and again and again that there is no such thing as an autism epidemic. The very sources that this person cited told him he is wrong. In the 1980s, the rate of autism was 1 in 10,000 children. No. Up until year 1991, autism was considered a tiny fraction of what we now know it to be. The medical establishment only looked at autistic people on the extreme end of the autism spectrum. Therefore, maybe 5 out of 100,000 might qualify for that little tiny sliver of the spectrum. Since year 1991, diagnostic criteria has widened vastly. And as I said previously, this is a good thing. By the way, this Hadley person knows this fact. He's just ignoring it in his video and in his book. Here I have shown a reproduction of the first graph in the Genius's book. Note that the caption is wrong. The data do not show a changed and changing rate of autism. The data as the Centers for Disease Control, that is, the people who performed the surveys and collected the data, stated on their website displaying these data that the data are changing diagnostic prevalence and not changing rate. The writer of the book spent more than one chapter trying to refute the conclusions of the very people he cited as authoritative. This is common behavior, of course, among conspiracy ideologues, blackguards, montbacks, and politicians. Here I have added red lines showing where the diagnostic criteria was changed prior to year 1991. Up till that time, the diagnostic criteria was extremely narrow for autism. Since year 1991, when diagnostic criteria widened and broadened, the criteria continued to do so officially two more times. Each time included many more people into the autism spectrum. We know this to be the case because the expanded diagnostic criteria moved about 3 million United States citizens from the diagnostic of intellectual disability and into the diagnostic for autism spectrum disorder. This smoking gun was dismissed with hand-waving and excuses by Handley. As he insisted, the experts he cited as authoritative also got this part wrong as well. Here is a copy of Ferdy Lance written by Rex Stout. It is the first novel-length story of Nero Wolf. This is a biography of Rex Stout written by John McAller. In this book, the main character, of course, is um, Archie Goodwin, 
And the second main character is Nero Wolf, because Archie Goodwin is the narrator, and it's in the first person. In this book, it was published in 19... <laughs> 1934. Nero Wolf is clearly autistic. Rex Stout, when you read the biography, also autistic. 19... 34. But, according to 1934 diagnostic criteria, neither Nero Wolf or Rex Stout would be considered autistic. According to current diagnostic uh, statistics, they both are autistic. If you read this, you will say, oh my, Rex Stout was autistic. If you read any of the Nero Wolf novels, short stories, novelas, full length novels, you'll say, gosh, Nero Wolf was, as a character, autistic. Character, real life, both autistic, up to year 1999, would not qualify under the diagnostic criteria as autistic. Now they do. Today, it's one in 36. No. Within 20 years, it will be one in two. That just cracks me up. That's right. 50% of the human population will soon be autistic. And this clown wants us to take him seriously. Half of an entire generation. No one can deny that we're in the midst of a public health crisis. Yes, it would be wrong to say that there is not a public health crisis going on. There is a massive public health crisis right now at this moment. It has absolutely nothing at all to do, by the way, with autism. It has everything to do with the increased death rate and misery rate of diseases that are easily eradicated but are not doing so, or not having been done so, due to people like this person. If we in increase the rate of vaccination, we will solve the public health crisis. And doing what we've done up until now, to sweep it under the rug, ignore the facts, the science, the legal testimony that all clearly point to a root cause, is to utterly fail our children. That's right. If the entire world's medical establishment was ignoring a autism epidemic, I would be outraged, I would be upset, I would be bitching and complaining, I'd be hammering on the doors of the Centers for Disease Control demanding an explanation. They're not doing that. Nobody out there is denying there is a epidemic of autism happening right now because it's not happening. There is absolutely zero evidence that it is happening. We know that autism is mostly genetic. Uh, if your father was or is autistic and you are a male, it is very likely that you are also autistic. If you are female, it is less likely, but greater than the population that, uh, in general. Genetic, mostly, approximately 80 to 85 percent. The rest, epigenetic, and in the womb, by the way, has absolutely nothing at all to do with vaccination. J.B. Hanley, co-founder of Generation Rescue, presents a compelling, science-based explanation of what's causing the autism epidemic. And that's very odd because in the entire book, Hadley did not show that there is an autism epidemic, let alone explain what is causing it the lies that enable its perpetuation, and the steps we must take in order to end it. Yes, and that is the problem. If we follow Hadley's advice to end a non-existent autism epidemic, tens of millions of people will die in screaming agony over easily preventable diseases. While many parents have heard the rhetoric that vaccines are safe and effective. That's right. Demonstrable facts supported by all of the evidence, bar none, is rhetoric. 
Every single medical professional out there who has studied the issue agrees vaccines are not only safe and effective, but vital for the health and well-being of humanity and other species. Rhetoric? No. Facts? Yes. And that the science is settled about the relationship between vaccines and autism. At last count, I saw 110 papers on the subject of vaccinations and autism. 110 papers, 100% 100 of those papers say there is no link between autism and vaccination. In the entire history of humanity, there has been one paper that shows a link between autism and vaccination. And the person who did that study lied. He has been censured by his medical peers. He has had his license to practice medicine revoked because he lied about his data and his results regarding autism and vaccination. As far as I can tell, there is not even one peer-reviewed science paper out there that shows any link between autism and vaccination. If there was a link between autism and vaccination, we would see the rate of autism increasing. We are not seeing that. As the number of people being vaccinated increases, we should see an increase in autism, if the hypothesis was true. Nowhere on the planet do we see any relationship between increased vaccination and increased autism. Don't see it anywhere. If these pro-disease, pro-death monsters want to convince us there is a link, all they have to do is step up and show it. Perform a study, write a paper, submit it to a peer-reviewed science journal, have it published, change the world. They won't do that. Few realize that in the 1960s, American children received three vaccines, compared to the 38 they receive today. Yes, and that is a good thing, not a bad thing. I would like to see the number of vaccines double, if possible. There are currently diseases that there are no vaccines for, and people die in screaming agony from those diseases. I would love to see vaccines developed for those diseases. And as soon as that vaccine is available, everybody everywhere should get them. Or that when parents are told that the odds of an adverse reaction are one in a million, the odds are actually far higher. Without vaccines, the odds of dying before one is eight years old was 30%. The current odds with vaccines and adverse re reactions to the vaccines 0 0.0000034 percent pick one everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it